Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God. I want to talk to you today about uh, something I heard someone say who says that they're a, a teacher. Apologize for any road noises you hear. I'm traveling right now. But I heard someone say as I was listening to a video about what they called believing devils. Interesting title. I thought I'd click on it and check it out. It would have been more apropos to to call it unbelieving devils. I think. Because basically what they did was in a nutshell make a mockery of people who believe in free grace and believe that we are saved through faith in Christ alone plus nothing else and they proceeded to talk about the gospel of John chapter 8 and this is an interesting take. This is a, a new one. This is a spin I had never seen someone do before. They started at verse 30. And if you go and you read that passage, Jesus is speaking. They read from verse 30, I believe it was down to verse 40. I think it was 44. And oh, let me just start off by reading verse 30. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. And then they said, they said to Jesus, to those Jews which believed on him, all right, then said, Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and they answered him we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man how sayest thou ye shall be made free. And Jesus goes on to say, truly I tell you, you know, verily, verily, that whoever serves sin is the servant of sin, or who committed sin is the servant of sin. And there's a dialogue back and forth between this very accusatory and angry group and the way they spun this was to say that this was the believers where Jesus just spoke to them and said that as he spoke many believed on him and that this was the same people but see this is this is this is disingenuous on this person's part because to start their teaching here is really I think deceptive uh, in trying to say that see believers can can be devils and that these people believe but belief this is what this teacher said is not enough and it's talking about concerning salvation that you have to uh, be a disciple as well wow I, I would have expected more. It's just too easy to go back and show that this is just a bunch of bunk. Start at verse 1. Read the entire passage. You can stop at 44 if you like, but I would just read the whole chapter all the way down to 59. This is 
is where one of my favorite chapters where Jesus declares himself to be God. You know, for all those people who say he never said he was God, read this chapter. But to show in context here what was left out in this particular false teaching, Verses 1 through 29 set the actual stage of what has transpired. What they didn't tell you, because they left out 1 through 29, was there were some others among this so-called group of believers. They were called the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And the beginning of the chapter starts with them bringing the woman who was taken in adultery and casting her before Jesus and accusing and, and tempting him, the Bible says. See what he would say. I'm paraphrasing this. We can go along and read it in a moment. And so, you know the story if you've read it. Jesus ignores them and he's scribbling something in the ground as they're hurling all these accusations. She was caught in the very act and Moses said that she ought to be stoned. And the Bible says that Jesus stooped down and rose in the ground as though he didn't hear them. And they keep, hey Jesus, what should we do? What should we do? We should stone her. And finally Jesus stands up and he says, he who has not sinned among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And he stooped down again and wrote in the ground. I heard one preacher say, hey, I wonder if he was writing for those who were nearest him some of the sins that they were guilty of. <laughs> uh, or maybe something else that uh, would have convicted them. I don't know. There's something he mused about. Interesting to think about. And so the Bible says that they were convicted in their conscience. And one by one, they dropped the stones and then walked away. And then shortly after that, they, they, they go right back to attacking him again. Uh, where Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. This is in verse 12. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees, here we go again, the Pharisees, Therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Now I want you to see, uh, the original in the beginning, it was the Sadducees and the Pharisees that threw the woman down in front of him and tried to catch him, set a trap for him, see what he would say, so they might accuse him. And now here they're trying it again. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I come and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. See, he just established that with him and the Father. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. Let's pause right there. If you remember in previous chapters, as Jesus is going to be baptized, or coming from being baptized. The Father says, This is my beloved Son, 
in whom I am well pleased. So this is what Jesus is referencing here. When we continue on, it says, These words spake Jesus in the treasury, as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. Then Jesus said unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins, whither ye I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, That ye shall die in your sins, Watch this now. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Underline that word, believe. Very, very important word. That's why we're called believers. Verse 25. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Verse 27. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me, the Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Now we get to verse 30. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. The whole lot that transpired that this person left out. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Now, when it says to those Jews which believed, that means there were there some among them which did not. If ye continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is true. And ye shall know the truth, verse 32, and the truth shall make you free. Now here's where this person started to twist this scripture. They left out verses 1 through 29. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? All right, and then they go back and forth with this dialogue. They end up calling Jesus a, 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 a Samaritan who has a devil. He tells them, I don't have a devil. You're dishonoring me. But, beloved, this was not those who believed on Jesus. These were the same accusers that were there from verses 1 through 29 that had tried to set Jesus up with the woman that was taken in adultery and tried to set him up and accuse him when he said, they said, you bear witness of yourself so your record is not true. These are the same accusers, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the Jews that did not believe. But they tried to spin it and make it be only those that believe. And so the whole just of their erroneous teaching was that there are believers that believe but 
belief is not enough. You have to continue as his disciple. Now we know the Apostle Paul attacked this damnable heresy when he said that there is another gospel which is not enough. And that it cannot be grace and works. It has to be grace or works. And really when he says or works, if you read all of the writings of Paul, you understand that he's not even saying that. Because he establishes that works can never save. But he also says here that it can't be grace and works. In other words, your belief in Christ plus works. He said otherwise grace is no more grace. He's saying grace and works are oil and water, honey. They don't mix. Not concerning salvation. And so what this teacher tried to say was that, and this is their own words, belief is not enough for salvation. That's a lie from the pit of hell. We know in the book of Acts, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Jesus said it over and over again himself. He just said, if you believe not that I am he, you're going to die in your sins. Just in the previous verses. Emphasis was on belief. He never mentioned discipleship. He didn't say, if you don't believe and become a disciple and continue in my word, You'll die in your sins. But that's what this person tried to imply. Wow, these people go to great lengths to deceive. Great lengths. Disgusting. No, the first 29 verses are very important. You can't just start at verse 30 and, and say, See? They were believers and they accused Jesus. Uh, excuse me, there were other people present called the Sadducees and Pharisees and also unbelieving Jews. And we get from, we glean from the scriptures when reading the whole thing that these were the ones who were accusing Jesus. And in the same way when he stooped down and wrote in the ground and ignored the people who were doing all the hoopla, he ignored these people when he was speaking and he spoke to those who believed. And he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Why? The moment they believed on him, they were saved. Now he's encouraging them to become good disciples. And in the midst of that, here come more accusations from those who are of their father, the devil, who is the accuser. whole nother picture than what this person painted. Beloved, there will always be those on this side of the, the gathering together unto him that will never believe that belief is enough. Whether they realize it or not, that makes them unbelievers. But for those of us who are trusting in Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection, plus nothing else that he's the savior of the world that he has saved our very soul by this
God awesome act of selflessness. Greater love has no man than to lay down his life or his friends. Jesus is even more amazing than that statement because he even laid down his life for his enemy. Just for one day with the hope that they may come to faith in him. That's loving somebody. Loving somebody that hates you even under death. That's love. So when you hear folk, man, say the blasphemous statement, belief is not enough, man, I pray, I pray God open their eyes. They're not, they're not in for a good experience coming up here shortly. Belief is enough because Jesus said it is. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said, He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I mean, these statements are made by him over and over again. I told you, I'm not going to even go pull out all the other scriptures. Just in the Gospel of John alone with Jesus' own words. And they deny him. He says it over and over again, believe on me. Believe in me. And what did they say? Belief is not enough. I don't, I don't know how somebody has enough gall to stand in the face of the living God and deny his very word. And then still think they're going to enter in. The Bible says let these people be accursed because they're preaching another gospel which is not another. I don't know if the woman that said this is, a, is an occultist and a deceiver or just deceived. I don't know. But I pray that if, it, if this is what it takes, that she have a road to Damascus experience and that God opens her eyes. So she can repent, change her mind, metanoia, change her mind. And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. Because the Jesus she's speaking of and the Jesus she's twisting the scriptures to fit doesn't exist. And the Bible says that this is the spirit of Antichrist, which means in place of Christ. When somebody inserts a statement like belief is not enough, they are substituting another gospel, which ties to another Christ. See, they're saying that Jesus is saying belief is not enough. That's not the Jesus of this Bible. I really didn't mean to go on for this long, but this is a passionate subject for me as I'm sure it is for you for someone to come up and, and boldly make that blasphemous statement and then have the nerve to try to twist the scriptures to fit 
that lie by not reading the full context of the chapter is beyond contemptible. And yet my prayer is still, may God open her eyes. And if you found this and you have fallen into that false doctrine that belief is not enough, may God open your eyes. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in Jesus' name. Amen.